Today we are going to talk about what Barley's going through, why he's here, and what we can do to help him. So Barley was diagnosed with something the trainer was calling correction aggression, which isn't a real thing, but it does imply that they noticed a problem. Uh, hi. And they noticed that he has issues with intimacy where they diagnosed him as acting out aggressively randomly, which does exist, but not in a meaningful way. It's usually neurological issues or head trauma. 99.9% .9 of the time a dog is deemed unpredictably aggressive. The person who is diagnosing them is unable to predict it. Uh, similar to I can't predict where the stars will be tomorrow. However, it is predictable if you understand astronomy. So we were given this information and now we've got this bitey, dangerous, aggressive guy. So how do we help Barley? Step one is without reaching, talking, touching, just presenting ourselves in the space, we want to know how he feels. And we can look at Barley, and that's a great shot there. See the ear muscles are down, his ears will never come down because of his breed. You see the eyes are soft and smiley, that means he's intimate and connected and comfortable and happy to see what he sees. And the released jaw is a great indicator that he feels good as well. When they shut the jaw, dilate the eyes, put the ears forward, they're measuring, they're using their depth perception, which means they have concerns they might need to use their depth perception, which is more hunting or defense, less with friends. So he's telling us already, step one is he enjoys being around us. So that's good to know. Um, knowing he's had intimacy issues with being reached at, talked to, touched, annoyed, bothered, put a muzzle on and violated while he tries to bite, um, our biggest goal with intimacy is to allow him to be in our presence without confrontation. Um, we're not trying to accomplish a tangible goal like getting him to allow certain things. We're trying to get him to see that we listen. That's going to be the kind of target and approach of all this. So, um, the next thing I want to see is what is his association with communication. So, in dog society, what's natural is a three-part communication. Step one, snap out of what you're doing. Step two, check in and pay attention. And then step three, they're gonna read what situation they're in, how you're doing, how you feel towards them, what you're asking of them, and then they're gonna make a call on whether or not to listen. So knowing he got diagnosed with um, correction aggression, I wanna see his association with intervention. There we go. So. Basically, if you ask him not to do something, he just looks for feedback and is genuinely curious and comfortable and interested in what you have to say. Okay, so he's just interested in the feedback. So he doesn't have, not only is he not correction aggressive, but he is genuinely curious and open to what you have to share if you can break his focus and get him to pay attention to you. Ah. Hi. <laughs> do politeness for permission over food. So again, we're going to hold it where he can reach it. And when he's calm, relaxed, and socially connected to me or somebody in the room, that is when he's going to get it. And any step in the process, even breaking the treat, if I feel hunting vibes, intensity, focus, I'm going to freeze. So it's basically like him pushing the pause button. So now we're going to practice impulse again over the food. Hey! Now let's try it again. You this, is not, this is not a compliance ritual. This is a rapport building and a recognition of who your relationships are ritual. I'll explain what that means eventually. Shh! So I'm not... So go ahead, honey. I'm not super concerned with... Whether or not he listens, I'm more concerned with, am I composed and clear? Do I come off like someone you'd listen to in a situation that matters? Do I come off like somebody who thinks you're going to listen, who trusts you to listen, who trusts myself to get listened to? So sometimes the first round of it doesn't work, but they actually ingrain the recognition of who's talking and what it's about. And then the second time you try it, it becomes more fluid, more natural. Good, honey. So he doesn't have an, he does not have an aversion to being direct, clear, and serious, which is common for dogs who have the, um, you know, the abuse and the violation where they get very 
angry and aggressive really easily and they have fight or flight close to the surface, it's not that they're missing kindness, they tend to be missing intimacy, honesty, and clarity. Go ahead. Go for it. And he also doesn't have an aversion to breaking what was once a rule, which is really the, you know, coming from a dominance theory boot camp scenario, um, the thing that makes you listen is something that might make you afraid to try again. So what we want is we don't want Barley to be robotic or programmed in what he chooses to do. We want him to relate responsibly based on what is and isn't okay by others and what is and isn't appropriate. So if someone says, don't touch that, this matters, he should not touch it. If they say, go ahead and get the food, he should go get it. So he's very, very confident, has a lot of self-esteem, has tremendous social skills, and has tremendous belief in himself. So for a dog who's gone through what he's gone through, he's as safe and easy to rehabilitate. Well, he doesn't need rehabilitation is what he's telling us. So um, this is really good news. However, um, the repetition and the familiarity with people that think and practice this will likely be vital for him to be out of the at-risk category. So the next thing we want to do is a dog who's experienced a lot of violation and has fight or flight close to the surface, obviously their association with communication and social participation is negative, but there's another piece of that where they're not getting the positive experience. So what we want to find out is um, how familiar are you with positive and healthy and natural um, boundaries and communication and natural dog society rules and standards, like politeness for permission and stopping when someone says stop it. How familiar are you with it and how receptive are you when people try it? Okay, so in dog society, just like people society, you don't reach at or touch or fixate or focus on something that someone else possesses. So he's obviously had what they call resource guarding or aggression over possessions where he was territorial in the living room and he bit another dog over it. Um, someone dropped treats and they raced to grab the treats and he bit their hand for trying to go get it. So he has definitely shown negative or unhealthy and antisocial habits about possession and permission. Um, but here he is being polite and respectful on command and on cue. And then he released and relaxed and now I can continue. I can also use a freeze projection, since he is calm enough to read subtlety, to see if he can read that I'm like, hey buddy, don't touch the stuff. And the important thing I do for a dog who's experienced rage towards him and raged out himself about possession and permission is to make sure when I'm assertive like that, that I'm really happy to share. And a really good hack for that is the recognition of how important it is that he develops a positive association with it. and also. Um, how much he deserves someone who uses corrective behavior in a way that's as such to help him learn right from wrong rather than to act out of anger or frustration or fear. So more of a parenting approach than dealing with a hostile situation. So this I think is his alligator and I see intensity excitement towards something someone has and so I'm going to ask him to use to calm down, oh. and you notice we don't rip it away or pull it away, we actually ask him to listen. So something that Barley, like any other dog, can read is if I focus my communication on teaching right from wrong, if I focus it on teaching right from wrong, We're skipping ahead. I was going to do this part next. <laughs> Shh. So if I focus my communication on teaching right from wrong and using healthy social skills <laughs> rather than and control, Hi. he's going to see me differently and see me as someone who's here to actually help him learn and grow rather than 
you know, someone who's just kind of coexisting and doing what they need to do to get accomplished what they want to get accomplished. All right. Okay. So we present it where he can reach it. Because we want to make it clear to Barney that it isn't speed, it isn't power, it isn't body, it isn't any sort of hunting or game or aggressive behaviors. Possession management has to do with communication, composure, and play. So what I'm going to do is he clearly wants to play tug, and so that's going to be our reward because he just told us what it is. And when he's calm, relaxed, at ease, and connected socially to me rather than fixating on what I have, I'm going to indulge him in tug. Excuse me, sir. And now we're going to see who can pull harder because it's so fun. And, <laughs> and he's really good at it. I don't think I can beat him. So something I can do to practice subtlety and communication, you know, friends are playing a game. Authority figures do not. I have a treat. Come on, treat. Distraction is a shortcut and a trick, and he's aware of that, and he's aware of his relationships that do that. What I want to actually teach my son is that communication, composure, clarity is stronger than body. The game we call red light, green light, which is green light is when you are comfortable and showing interest, we can apply or increase intimacy, and if you show any sort of hesitation or concern, we freeze. So basically, if you get the vibes that you're tied to the train tracks and a train is coming, we stop the train. It does a couple things. One, it shows him that we listen. It also shows him that we care, because not only did we show recognition that he switched from I'm okay with this to I'm not, but we also made the best possible choice for someone who doesn't want to be touched, which is to stop. By staying still instead of backing off, we make it clear that we are not avoiding uh, confrontation or aggression for a selfish reason, but rather just listening to how he feels for him. So, I'm going to play some red light, green light. So right now he is comfortable with what's occurring, I'm going to begin to apply intimacy. Right now he froze his jaw, good. And he also sniffed towards my hand to qualify me. So in that moment I froze. So here it comes again. He again looked up and poked towards the hand that's, I want to check out your hand. Right? And what we want to do is nurture the ability for him to not be super demonstrative. You don't need to bounce away. You don't need to growl hard. You don't need to snap and bite. Um, the more he gets listened to, the more subtle his cues get. And the further fight or flight is from the surface. Okay, can you stop, honey? Yeah. So I'm going to try again. So that was a clear signal. And it came with a little bit of a walk away. But my goal is to get him to a place where he can just be super subtle and gentle and just know, hey, I heard that and I listened. Here. My goal was to try to apply intimacy and then have him tell me how he feels and get responded to in a way that's really supportive. And that's what we just did. <laughs> okay, we're going to try another one. Perfect. He stayed still. He went from tense and uncomfortable to I don't know about this to... Ow. I to like, hey, this is fine that your hand's there. And when he goes, this is fine, I move. So I actually I actually have a chance to, to positively reinforce him being okay with it. So being calm and relaxed and comfortable was a better moving me away to it. So we want that to be... We want that to be your superpower. Okay, so here I come. Here you go. So now we're going to do it with the leash. Here we go. So I have the leash. I present it. Okay. I'm going to go towards over his head. He wants to inspect more, so I freeze. And then he said it was okay. And when he's comfortable, yes, honey, good. So now we're going to play the game of, this should take days between, but when he goes from I'm a little unsure about the touch to I'm comfortable with where you chose to stay, instead of backing off, I'll actually increase intimacy. Thank <laughs> you. 
So now, there we go. He is comfortable. I reach. He goes to inspect my hand. Gets. He got. He got okay with it. And now I'm gonna back away. You did it. That was good. So let's try another one. Ready? So he doesn't need to flee to get a point across. Fight or flight. We don't need fight or flight. So that's all we care about is that he's learning that people listen and people care. Not what we're able to accomplish, not how far it goes or in what way. Good. So he's learning another tool he has. He's saying, I don't want to be touched. And he's learning a subtle bounce or a subtle lean away. And that'll get more and more subtle the more we don't violate him just because we're physically close enough to or to make a point or get back at him. Or, or like his previous trainer said, you're a spoiled brat and so we need, to, we need to break him. Yeah, so you lose your mom who's 13 years old in an accident, end up in a bad situation, become really uncomfortable, and you're a spoiled brat. So that's, uh, that's the rub on who you are according to that philosophy. So that's it. That's all we're going to do is we're going to try to make sense and we're going to try to show we listen and we're going to enforce right over wrong with a smile on our face and he's going to have a blast here. So we just found out Barley does not have Giardia or any yucky fecal stuff. So he's going to get to go join his cows. And the same thing here, we're going to show him that when he says he wants to back away or be ignored or not bother, we ask others to stop, just like we do for him. So if he does it to someone else, or if they do it to him, it's the exact same rule. We enforce right over wrong, and we enforce listening and caring how others feel. So that becomes something he becomes used to. Carly, your leash is silly. Come here. Okay, we're not taking your leash off. I'm going to take that off. There we go. So something I'm going to do for Barley now is I'm going to create a bubble for him and show him that he doesn't need to worry about bubbles. Make sure it listens to the Okay, so I'm going to do it once we have a good space. Good. So one of the advantages of the dog society component is dogs are better at reading subtlety and making thoughtful choices than people are. So inherently this environment is going to be better for him. <laughs> Come on, Barley. Barley you just some laundry. You're on TV, man. This environment is going to inherently be better for him. And it's going to reinforce everything we want. Is that others treat others based on how they feel and what is going to work for them. Rather than just doing stuff to them like people do. Yeah, you do it. Hi, I'm so glad Barley made it to the party. This is so great. Rosie? He gets lost easy. Did he get lost in the crowd? I don't know where he is. Rose? It's a good place to be. Okay, push 
crazy about Don't that. Don't step on the little fluff. Right? Yeah, buddy. <laughs> 